Okay, today I've got this Samsung 32 inch set, the model LN32B360C5DXZA. And I thought I would just show you some voltages if you have one of these sets and you just want to troubleshoot it. I was going to show you uh, what the standby voltages should be, where it gets the on off command, where it turns the inverter on and off. As you can see, this one only has the two boards it has a main board and it has a power supply inverter board. So the power supply inverter board on this one is a BN44-00289 B. And the main board on this model is a BN96-11408 B. Okay, so with the set off the only voltage I'm really interested in is the standby 5 volt power supply and that's actually pin 2. Pin 1 right here is the blue lead. Pin 2 I should see about 5 volts there I see 5.17 so I'm very happy about that and of course I'm showing you a working model on this one. Uh, the power supply on off command is actually pin 1 and that's going to be 0 volts. Now, as in my other videos, you could jumper pin 1 to pin 2 to force the power supply on, then you could measure the other voltages. I'm going to go ahead and just use the remote, and I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to look at pin 1. It actually only went up to 1 volt, so that's all that is required to turn this on, so I would advise you in using a resistor, if you're going to force the power supply on, use about a... Uh, somewhere between a 500 ohm and a 1K resistor between pin 1 and pin 2 to force this power supply on. So let's look at the other voltages here. Pin 3 should be ground. Pin 4 is labeled 15 volts. Pin 5 and pin 6 are both ground. Pin 7 is 5.3. Now this is a run voltage, not to be confused with the standby. The next pin is going to be 5.3 volts as well followed by ground now our next one's going to be 13 volts as is the following pin 13 volts now the one after that is the backlight inverter on off I don't know if you can if the camera might block it or not but uh, actually the board is labeled right here you can just barely see it right there uh, the next one is the inverter on off 4.7 volts when the inverter is on so let me shut the set off goes down to zero as soon as the inverter turns off the pin following that is labeled E-PWM pulse with modulation so let's go ahead and turn the set back on we'll watch that pin it went to 2.8 now it's down to 2.3 volts now it's climbing up, it went back up to 3 volts. Uh, that is the pin that adjusts the inverter backlight level. In the menu there will be an adjustment for backlight. You can vary it from low to high. So I've selected the backlight in the video setup menu right now and I'm just going to run the backlight up and down. So there's the backlight at 10 and it's got 4.2 volts. There's 9, 8, 7, six five four three two one and backlight down at zero that's as low as it goes so it varies from approximately nine tenths of a volt all the way up to about 4.2 volts and that adjusts the backlight level I don't know if you can see it if I zoom out on the camera just a little bit here okay so with the camera zoomed out I don't know if you can see it or not on the video, but as I adjust the backlight, you can actually see it change through the little holes in the back of the panel here. Now the pin following the uh, pulse width modulation pin is labeled detect 5 volts. And I do see 5 volts on that pin, but I only see it when the backlight is lit. So I would suspect that's a feedback pin 
if there was ever an inverter problem, that voltage would change as it goes back to the main board and it could signal that the inverter has failed or even shut the set off. The pin after that is labeled sync. Uh, I never see any voltage on that pin whatsoever, so I don't believe it's used in this particular model. The very last pin is grounded. I should see zero volts. I do see a, a slight voltage. That's because I'm grounded over here on the main board. So I wanted to show you the voltages on the main uh, uh, on the power supply board to the main board. That's what you should see. Now let's take a look at a couple uh, connectors on the main board. I'll show you the connector that runs from the main board to the keypad as well as to the remote control receiver. Okay, so here's the connector right here. This is a 10 pin connector. We'll start with pin number one. Pin number one is labeled IR, so as I press any of the buttons on the remote, I should see that kind of bounce around that tells me the remote receiver is indeed receiving the remote. Should stay at five volts and go active low when it receives a signal. Uh, pin number two is ground. Pin number three is uh, the 3.3 or the 5 volts depending on what version you have. This one happens to have 5 volts on it. Now pin number 4 is the LED. So as I press one of the buttons on the remote and it fires the little front red LED, you'll see it blink. In fact, let me turn the TV off. As the set goes off, the LED comes on. I see 1.9 volts on that pin, which means it's it's biased on. As I turn the Samsung on, the LED should blink on and off. So I should see that voltage go high, low, high, low a few times until the set actually starts. So that's just a little red LED on the front of the TV, nothing more. So let's look at pin five. Pin five is a buzzer. This one, I don't believe, has a buzzer on the front. Some models do. Now pin six, is a key scan line as well as pin 7. Key input 1 is labeled for pin 6. And that's the buttons on the side here. So I'm just going to go ahead and press one of the buttons. And we'll see it should change. That one presses it down to 0.81 volts. That one takes it to 1.4 volts. They use a resistor ladder array, which means as you press the different voltages, you will see different things. So that was key scan 1. Let's look over here at key scan 2. 0.8, 0, 2.1, and then let's see what the power button does on this one. The power button actually is connected to key scan 1. It takes it down to 0 volts. And let's see. Pin number 8 is labeled always 5 volts. I don't see 5 volts on it, however. Yeah, I don't see, even though it's labeled as 5 volts, it may not be used on this particular model. I do see 5 volts on pin number 9, however. And pin number 10, I see no voltage whatsoever on this particular model. So let's take a look at the voltages on the LVDS cable that drive the LCD panel. This one does not have a timing controller board, uh, so it drives the LCD panel directly. So on these first few pins, it looks like pins 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, I should see 13 volts. The next few pins should be ground. And then following that, these are all the data pins. This is a 4-bit panel, which means I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 data lines going to it. One positive and one negative is each bit of data going to the panel. You could look at those. Uh, it's just a voltmeter. You won't be able to see very much whatsoever on that. So I do see about 1.2 volts on them there. Get my lead will probe off of it. Since I am uh, probing with my left hand and I'm right-handed, so it does make a bit of a difference there. So I just thought I'd show you what you could see on these. If you're having a uh, no-picture distorted video problem, you should certainly look and see if you've got your 13 volts, 12 volts that go to the uh, LCD panel. Make sure that works. 
And now for some quick voltages on the main board here. Uh, IC501. One point eight volts on the output, four point seven on the input. The adjustment pin is 0.6 volts. Uh, you can look on L701 on this side, 1.2 volts. IC403, 4.7 on the input, 3.3 on the output, 0 on the adjust pin. IC601, 3.2 on the input, 1.2 on the output. 0 volts on the adjustment pin. Over here, IC101, this one should be grounded, it's a different type of regulator, so you should have an input pin, 13 volts, the tab is grounded, the output pin on this one is 8.8 .8 volts, or about 9 volts. IC102, the same way, should have the 8.8 .8 on the input, because it feeds through this regulator to the second regulator, and I would expect 5 volts on the output of that IC regulator. So I hope that will help some people troubleshoot some voltages on this particular model. I'm going to try to do uh, a couple of these every time I get a chance. Just voltages you should see on the various plugs and connectors that you can isolate down where the problem in your own TV is and troubleshoot it and get your own set going. With your help, once again, we can keep these things out of the recycle bin, out of the landfill. I appreciate your views, your support, your comments, your questions. I try to answer as many as I can, but as always, I can't answer every single one. I'm sorry. Everybody have a great day. Remember, follow me on Twitter, NorCal715. Hope everything goes good for you. Take it easy. We'll see you on the next video.